Welcome to the Battery Testing Mentor Podcast. My name is Johannes and here I talk about all topics around battery testing and battery handling. Short, on the point and with practical advice. Also visit www.batterytestingmentor.com and register there for the email update. With every episode I send out the key takeaways of that episode straight into your inbox. If you have any questions, remarks, comments, advice, let me know. Um, Just hit reply on that email and you can directly contact me. With that now, enough of this general stuff, let's go into the episode. Last time we talked about cell module and then I wanted to talk about the pack. I didn't finish it. So I talk today about PEC. Maybe in a very short wrap up, we have the cell. We connect the cells together in series and parallel, bring it into modules. And then we ended last time with having the modules with the BMS, with a slave BMS inside. And basically the module ready to be brought into a PEC level. So you take several modules, you connect them together. Normally these are connected in in series to reach a high voltage level. You want to have, again, the high voltage to reduce the current, to reduce the the diameter of your cables. And therefore you take the modules and put them in in series. There are also some new inventions about how to like basically take the modules and make some serial parallel connection where you can say, okay, I take the battery, split it into two ways and put them in uh, parallel or put them in in separate modes so that I have two batteries. But we just stay now at a very general standard plain battery pack. So you have the modules, you put them together in series, one next to the other, and you have them all in the battery case. Maybe I start here with this battery case. The battery case is the protection shell of the battery pack. The module itself is typically not protected. You can openly or pretty openly get to it. Normally there is maybe a small cover for the contactors of the cells, but it's not watertight, it's not dust tight and so on. This watertightness, this dust tightness, this whole protection against the outside is coming with the battery pack. And there you normally want to have them again, like lightweight, especially if you look into automotive applications or generally mobile applications. And at the same time, it must be resistant against all these influences from outside, from against dust, against um, salt, this corrosion. Like in the electric vehicle area, you have really a lot of influences. Like. Just imagine driving then in, in winter, in summer with the salt on the street, with the dirt in very dry areas where it's very dusty and so on. And this all need to be yeah, protected from the battery to avoid any impact. So this is the, the case. So therefore you have also kind of the whole battery normally in one location. You don't have an, like this distributed batteries. There are ideas about having distributed batteries around the car, kind of in there's a, a little bit of the battery in the trunk and a little bit in the door and a little bit of the battery is somewhere in front. A challenge here is really that you need to protect in the, the battery from the outside. And this is again, this topic of inactive mass, like does not help you to generate an a higher uh, level of energy density because it's just like that material right so you put all the modules together in the battery pack the battery pack is the shell to the outside and you close it off of course you need to have some small details considered like the ceiling that it's really tight also over a long time and then you also need to make sure that it it adjusts to the air pressure. So you need a pressure equalizer that allows the battery, the the air to go in and out and ideally without bringing humidity inside the battery pack. Then looking at the, the inside, you have the battery modules connected. You need a control system that 
looks out on all the battery modules on all the slave BMS, so it's a master BMS, makes sense, right? And this gets all the data together, all the cell voltages. It has a current sensor normally that uh, measures the current that goes into the battery pack. And because you have then a serial connection of all the modules, you only need one current sensor because the current cannot like split up, right? It has often some, some other sensors like a uh, humidity sensor, for example, to check how humid it is in the pack. Some things like isolation resistance measurement. All these things to make sure the battery is in a safe state. Also, what I forgot last time to mention is there are, of course, temperature sensors as well in the module connected to the slave BMS, and this is then connected to the master BMS. And the master BMS is then the connection point to the outside. There the, the communication with the vehicle happens and all the, the measurement data, or at least the important measurement points, are then also sent out into the, the vehicle into, for, for other computers to use this data. That was the BMS. What else is missing is the uh, connection to the outside. Like you have then the modules connected. You have typically short cables that go then from the like end of the module from, from the kind of final uh, poles to the connection. And one thing that is in between is normally a switch because I think I said it already. I'm pretty sure I said it already. You can't switch off a battery. The chemistry is always working, but nevertheless, you want to make sure that the battery case, the, the battery as itself can be safe by switching off the contactors so that there is no voltage, no, no live part basically exposed. So you have then these contactors that can open the cable, the, the connection. Nevertheless, always remember inside the battery is always voltage inside. Even if you don't measure outside, there is voltage inside. So as soon as you open the battery pack, these connectors do not help you anymore. There are other elements often as well inside like fuses or one fuse to make sure if there's really a short circuit, then it blows up and uh, protects everything. And then it really depends on the design of the battery pack. There are sometimes elements that come in and sometimes these elements are not included. Um, there is really a wide range. One thing that is also often uh, the, the case, especially with cars that front end wheel, like all wheel drive, that you have two exits of the battery, like one power line to the front, one to the back. So there's inside then this uh, distribution of the power going on that you can have these two exits. And sometimes there's even a third exit that connects to the charging point um, so that you can really also do very efficient, fast charging where you have a direct connection of the plug-in port of the charger to the battery pack. There are other options or vehicles where it kind of is maybe uh, via the, the normal power line Really, a lot of uh, options exist and it depends on the design of the battery pack. Looking at stationary battery systems, they are basically exactly set up the same. You also have the modules connected to a string normally and this string is then a battery pack. There is a little bit of kind of unclarity regarding the wording because in battery, in stationary battery systems, you often distinguish between pack and system. In an electric vehicle, pack and system is basically the same. A system means a battery that is in itself ready. It, it can be used. It, it has all the control inside. It is safe. In the stationary battery world, there is the distinction between a battery pack, which is basically a an, an string of many modules that has a very high voltage, has an uncertain power supply, but often there are certain control elements missing because you are connecting in a stationary battery system many strings next to each other because you need to go to very high energies. 
often a stationary battery system. If you don't put it in, in your cellar, but if it's really industrialized, it's in the range of tens of, of megawatts, where you really need a lot of batteries in parallel. Uh, because at one point you have a limit with the voltage, like if you go above 1,200, 1, 1,500 volt, you definitely are beyond uh, some, some regulations that make it much more difficult to uh, get the whole approval. So you have to spend more money. And then it makes suddenly more sense to say, I limit myself at this voltage and then just increase the current by, by paralyzing these strings. There you say one string is then often referred to as a battery pack and the system is the overall system with all the strings and the control system. In a stationary battery system, you still have the, the point with protecting from the outside. The simplest solution there is just using such a uh, 20 foot container or 40 foot container where you just put everything inside. It's an, an robust, very uh, reliable solution kind of the cheapest way, and especially there, you don't need to take care about weight. You don't need to take care about space. It must not be designed to fit in some special area. So you can just go with such a standard option. Yeah, with this, I think I have covered the whole battery pack. I am happy if you know any uh, more details and want to add something, let me know, reach out to me. Of course, it is always necessary to have the the other side of the battery pack to really run a battery right like you typically have not a battery standing alone but it needs to be connected to to some computer to some system to some grid be it in a grid in for the stationary battery or the the grid inside the vehicle for the uh, electric vehicle some consumption of power devices and all this needs to play together so there is then really some, some complexity coming up even after designing the battery pack and where this complexity needs to feed back into the requirements of the battery pack as well. Nevertheless, I will leave it with this today. Thank you for your time and I'm happy to hear you next time or to see you next time again here at the Battery Testing Mentor Podcast.